Well, it feels fantastic to have won the award. And it also feels wonderful to have been in the context of not just people from other fields, but people from other parts of the world, to feel the communality of the vision of the whole prize. For me, it's always very important to find a strategy of working in which I don't completely have control. It's about constructively losing control, not knowing what I'm doing. It's always in that gap that something new will emerge, rather than if I think I know what I should be doing. I think that, firstly, it's difficult to speak on behalf of all artists. I can talk of myself. I know that the task of myself and of other artists like me is to be in the studio working as well as conscientiously as we can in the hope that somewhere along the way in the work that we make there are elements that other people see that reinforce things in them, that give courage, that give encouragement to understanding the world as something that we can control, that we can make meaning in it. And I think that is the only way in which, but it is a very vital way in which art is part of a larger ethical activity, but not in any instrumental way, only in the indirect way of making, being part of the constitution of different people, of how they make themselves up, of how they understand themselves. Most of the things that I've done which have be, been seen as successful, been seen as interesting, have been things which have happened at the edge of what I thought I was doing. So, for example, when I started making the animated films, I tried very hard to do good erasure, but I failed. And I thought that this inability to keep the paper clean was just a lack and I should do it better. And other people looking at the film, not me, other people looking at the film, said in fact they found the traces of the previous history of images the most interesting part of the films. So that was something then I had to look at again from the outside and suddenly understand, yes, in fact, the films can be about the passage of time, about making the past visible and thick. So that's something that, that I came across rather than something I thought of. So I'm always very interested in the discoveries rather than the knowledge. It's very difficult to pinpoint at which point that became clear, but I think if you're working in animation, you're always working in a field of process rather than fact, of provisionality, of an image that is at what, this at one point and can become something else in the next frame or over the next frame. So the nature of change is, is something that is essential to the process. And in a, using drawing as a metaphor, very often through the process of making these changes and doing these changes, one arrives at a clear drawing. So that the, the, the shift and change and changing from one thing to its opposite to a different thing is not a mistake. It's not as if you're doing something to correct the drawing. You're following a process through, and at the end you very often arrive at a clarity which is not there at the beginning. So it's the... Understanding comes through the physical activity of making drawings. I don't know that you never find yourself sufficient, but when you find yourself sufficient, then there isn't really a need to make any extra part of yourself. There isn't a need to, to leave some other trace of yourself. I think the, one would say of all artists, of all people who make objects or have to leave something behind, whether it's a book, a poem, a song, Part of it must have to do, as far as I can understand, must have to do with a need to see yourself in something outside of yourself. That is not just a decoration. It's not just something which you choose to do or don't do. It has to in some way stand in for some part of you that you can't sense in yourself. You see, I think if you... I think if you encounter beauty, you encounter beauty. You go to, a, you see a beautiful garden, you don't necessarily have to make a drawing of the garden. You see a fantastic sunset, 
you don't have to you don't have to record it you don't have to make a copy of it if you are even taking a photograph of it it's part of you wanting to show it to someone else part of it not being enough for simply you to uh, remember it part of understanding that we need connections we need connections to other people to feel full ourselves and I think that what you have with artists is that in a very radical extent there's a very huge amount that is missing in them I think that artists are by nature kind of deformed people they they have a craving to know they exist by things they make My plans for the future are always to try to get back to the studio. In the sense, the studio is it's not just a workplace, it's also very much a place of gathering who I am. And it's done through the mixture of objects that are in the studio, through the activities of drawing, um, through the looking of other pieces that are sitting around the, wa wa the walls. Um, it's very much, I start to feel, not complete, but certainly centered and at rest at peace in the studio. I would say to people wanting to start off as artists, wanting to, who feel a need that they want to make something outside of themselves, is to have confidence in the process, in the activity of doing it. To, to do it even if you don't know exactly what it is that you're going to be making. Because in the end, what you make shows who you are, it shows your fears and your desires. And if the work you do is very dull, that says something about the person making it. And if the work is very exciting, that says something about the person making it. So you need to have confidence in the process and confidence in yourself, but understand that you take the risk that everything you do will show who you are.